Hello. Uh, today's question on the Ask Adam Anything series is this one from Jane Hilston. Thanks for the question, Jane. So look, the question is, hey Adam, this is for your Ask Adam Anything series. Does anyone even use monthly SEO services anymore? If you had a solid Google ad campaign in place and you were optimizing your website for SEO with relevant updates, what would be the reason to also pay for monthly SEO services? Awesome question and one that I'm really keen to, to dive into. So let me just do a quick, um, a quick explanation of what's actually happening with um, SEO and Google Ads and why you might consider paying for monthly SEO services. This should make sense once I've explained how all the bits and pieces work. So when, when people go to Google, they obviously type in some sort of phrase into here. So they are typing in a keyword phrase that they want to know information about. Now, normally what happens is you get the first three or four results, and these are all, these days, these are ads. So they're clearly marked as an ad, but Google puts them at the top of the search results now, which is a bugbear for a lot of SEOs, but um, Google makes their money from the ads, so I can understand why they would put those results, their own results, where they get money for every click, up the top. So this is where, this is where your um, Google Ads strategy would apply also known as pay per click PPC. So that's good if you've got that in place. I think ads are a good way to get pretty much instant visibility. They're a lot, they show up, you know, within a day compared to SEO results, which can take some time. The downside is that you've always got to pay Google for every single click. So you're not really building an asset and it's pretty expensive if you rely on paying for every single click, which also puts a huge onus on you to actually know if you do get a click to your website, how many people do you convert to an email subscriber? How many people do you then convert into a sale? And is that even worth paying the money at the front end for what is it worth the money you're getting at the end? Because if you're spending $10 a click and each, each click's only generating $5 worth of business, it's not going to be a very sustainable strategy. So folks, just give us a, um, a thumbs up or a comment if you're watching this live. And if you're watching the replay, just type replay. All right then, so there are the ad results. Let me just make a little more room here. Okie dokie. Now, what happens next? Underneath the ads is where Google then shows the organic results. And there's 10 per page. These are what are known as the SERPs, which is just SEO jargon for search engine results pages. So this is like your number one ranking here, number two, number three, number four, number five. You get the idea. These are the what are known as SEO. When you're focusing on SEO, this is what you're focusing on the organic search results. Now, I don't know the exact stats, but generally speaking, I think about 80% of people click on the organic SERPs, the organic results, 20% of people click on the ads. Of course, that's going to change according to keyword and country and everything else, but as a rough rule of thumb, that's what I think the stats are at the moment. So, to answer the next part of this question, Let's look at what contributes to the SERPs, the, the organic search results. So yes, as you've mentioned, Jane, if you are optimizing your site each month for updates, etc., and you've got good content on your site, that is awesome because SERPs, they, this is called SEO, 
and actually up the top is also called SEM, Search Engine Marketing. So down the bottom here is SEO. So there's two major factors here that contribute to the SEO. The first is the content on the page itself. So what's happening is that Google is looking at what people are searching for up here and they're matching it up with the content on your page. And so all the pages with content related to whatever the search is appear in the search results. Now often there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of search results. Google then needs to sort them out into place from first, second, third, all the way down to like one millionth place. So how does Google actually do that? Well, it looks at the second factor of SEO, and that is the authority of that page and that website. So if you have good content on your site and you're optimizing each time with each of the updates and doing good quality, um, doing good quality content, this is, on, this is known as on-page SEO because it actually happens on your site. And this is where you have your technical SEO. So this is making sure that like your meta tags, your meta descriptions, your focus keyword, all the um, headers, header ones, header twos, image tags, image titles are all aligned to the focus keyword that you want to rank for. Uh, that's all like under the surface stuff that your technical SEO person can help with, plus the content itself. Let me just get rid of that. So there's some of the factors here, as well as speed and everything else. So if you've got a really slow site, it's not going to rank as well as a fast site. That's again on page SEO because you're in control of that. So if you are paying for the SEO services. Let me just pull the question back up. If you're optimizing your website, yes. Yeah, so this is optimizing your website. But the other thing that we haven't addressed here is this thing here, which is authority. Which is very, very important because if, you, if you've got great content, and it's all your on-page SEO is good, the content is good, it's technically sound, and it's a fast website, fantastic. That's good, but it doesn't guarantee you a place on that first page of Google. Because Google is actually looking, it's got to work out who to rank one to 10, and who to rank 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50. So the most perfect stuff up here isn't all of the equation. What moves the needle in terms of your search rankings is your authority. This stuff's a given, like you can, you, without this, it's going to be hard to rank. You're in complete control of that. But the second part is the authority. And that is made up predominantly of signals to Google, which include, but mainly, impacted by backlinks. So another person's website linking back to yours. There are lots of other signals as well. Like, I mean, this is under lock and key, the Google algorithm, but everybody tries to, to work it out and it's, it's reasonably um, agreed upon that these are the predominant signals, mainly backlinks, but things like social media shares, um, what's known as dwell time, like how long people actually hang around on your site. So, but the, 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 the predominant one is, is backlinks. And not just any backlinks, backlinks from other high authority websites. So let's take a look now at why you might choose to pay for SEO services. I, I, I would consider paying for I, the answer to the, the short answer to the question, Jane, is yes, you should pay for monthly SEO services if they know what they're doing and if you're not prepared to do it yourself. Let me get into the, the pros and cons a bit soon once I've explained this. 
So these are some of the signals, but let's just, the, the main one, as I've said, is, is backlinks. All right then, so say, say you've got a post. So this is your, this is your blog post, say, on your website. Let's assume all the on-page stuff is being taken care of. So you've got good content, good technical, good speed, etc. Cool. That's your on-page SEO sorted. But what we then need to factor in is how many backlinks point to this page. Now, each, each page, each website has its own rating out of 100 because Google's got this system where it looks at all the websites and it factors, as I said before, authority and content. So if you've got a high authority site and good content, that's a double whammy. You've got a high chance of ranking on the first page. And this stuff here is what a good SEO services company should be helping you with. That's what's going to make the big difference. Now, many don't, but the good ones do. So if you've got lots of good backlinks, from high authority sites, the, the, the language here is domain authority, so DA. Each page has a DA, a domain authority, or a domain rank, depending on which tool you use to assess it, from one to 100. And if your page, say, is a, is a 20, it's not going to go as well against a site that has a domain authority of 40 or 50. Confused yet? It, it, it isn't actually that complicated. So let me just let me just um, show you how that that works. So you've got domain authority from zero or essentially one to a hundred. It's a logarithmic scale like that. So this might be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40. So you might be a 50 or a 60 or a 70. Typically, on a small business websites, you're probably going to be around maybe 40, maybe 30, depending on how much content you publish and how many backlinks you've got. Now, it's a logarithmic scale, so it's not linear, it's curved, which means it's 10 times, it, it gets harder by a factor of 10 to go from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. So you, your website's up here with 100, that's like Google, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn pretty much is 100 or 99. So they're the big websites. Um, so look, if you're, if you're looking to rank for a certain keyword, you really want to be on page one. But if your domain authority is, is pretty low, like say it's 30, and you're trying to compete against companies or, or websites that have a domain authority up here, it's too big a, it's often too big a bridge to jump because your content might be great, but your authority just isn't probably going to get you up ranking for those higher sites. So we've all got a score somewhere along this spectrum here. And you can look that up. You can look up uh, to find out what your score is. Uh, Moz, um, will give you a score and Uber Suggest will give you a score. It's free to use. Moz has its domain authority. Uber Suggest, I think it's got a domain ranking. There's Ahrefs, there's a whole bunch of them that will give you certain certain scores. But that's getting, yeah, okay. So now we've got the idea of each website has a domain authority. Okay, so going back to here, if we've got high DA websites linking to you, that trust flows on to your website and boosts 
your D, your own domain authority. So this is the stuff that moves in here the most. If you've got good quality backlinks pointing to your site, your domain authority is going to be higher, and therefore this factor here is going to, that's what you focus on, getting the backlinks. So a good SEO services company will focus on this area, assuming they've got the content and everything else. So then what, what should they actually be doing? What, what are you actually paying for aside from um, high, help, them helping you get higher domain authority and thus helping you get higher and more uh, search rankings? A good SEO company or a dream SEO company, in my opinion, some exist, they would be providing you with keyword research so that they would tell you, okay, so given your website's got a domain authority of say 30, this keyword phrase, which they would do their research to find out, this keyword research phrase, if you wrote a post about this, on this based on this keyword, you would have a likelihood, a high likelihood of ranking on the first page. That's the first thing that they would do. They would also make suggest, and ideally they would actually um, either help help with in help with um, the keywords, so the target keyword and and what to put in the subheaders and everything else, so that when you do write about that keyword, there's variations of that that you rank for too. In an ideal world, that would also help give you suggestions on which websites might link to you. So writing the article is one thing, but you're going to increase your domain authority with outreach to other blogs who might like to link with link to you. So help with outreach and identifying which blogs um, might link. What we've just started low. Let me just stop that. There we go. Okay, we're back. Back with it. Back with the programming. Uh, so they should say, well, look, here's ten blogs that have linked to articles similar to yours. So here's them. Here's their editor. Here's what you should say to get on their radar and. Um, they may link to you. The other thing they would ideally do in a dream situation is if they've identified a keyword phrase that's important to your business, but your domain authority is too low, that you don't stand a chance of ranking for it, they should be able to say, you're not going to rank for it for your own website, but if you did a guest blog article for a higher authority blog, you may be able to rank for that keyword by appearing on their website. So you still get you still get ranked, like your article gets ranked, but it's on somebody else's website. So they should help with third party um, guest blog opportunities. So that you can, ideally they would say, look, here's some blogs that accept guest posts. Here's the editor. Here is, um, you know, an outreach email to the editor to, um, yeah, to send to them to submit a request to blog for their for their thing for their um, blog. And that way, that would be that would be a dream situation, Jane, um, for an SEO services company. But. I know there's so many horror stories of SEO companies just taking people's money month on, next month, next month, and they don't actually do anything. I've seen, the, uh, <laughs> I've worked with clients where they've been paying like two grand a month, five grand a month for SEO services, but the SEO company has not done a thing. There's no extra backlinks, there's no reports as to what they've done. They just literally make SEO seem so confusing that the client goes, oh, okay, you take care of it. So you'd really need to work out if the SEO company knows what they're talking about and is prepared to do this sort of work. All right, so I feel like I might have confused everybody. <laughs> I hope not. 
I hope I've, I've, hope I've made it reasonably clear that an SEO services company should be helping you build backlinks and giving you keyword research and giving you suggestions of where you can guest blog to rank for phrases that are too competitive for your own blog to rank for. Now, if you want, if you want some more information on this sort of stuff, I do have my SEO planning template. I do have a video in the units, which is in the marketing template walkthrough videos on the SEO planning template. So that will give you a bit of a how-to guide on how to do this. So there we go. I know there's some great SEO people in this um, Web Marketing That Works group. I'm going to tag a few people in the comments to this so that they can weigh in and maybe they can help some of the people in the group who would, would like help. So there we have it. That's my answer. Jane? There's the question. Thanks very much for submitting it and thanks for watching the video. Hope it all made sense. If you've got any further clarification questions, drop them below and I will be sure to answer them for you. All right, folks, see you later.